Okay, guys, I want to go over five ways that art basically influences our lives. And I want to start with saying that these are the five ways that, in my opinion, that we could actually look at art and say, what does art have to do with my life? And I'll start with practically, right? That'll be fine art, like art we see in museums, and applied art. And if you look around... Applied art is pretty much everywhere. It's in the design on, on cups and mugs and architecture or clothing. Political art is best described as art that someone made to make a political statement. Social art and political art kind of go hand in hand. It's usually art that raises a call to action that you see in protest or something. Ceremonial art is typically religious and traditional art is best described um, as a festival or a native event. For example, a Caribbean festival or a Chinese New Year festival. Now, again, practically, we have fine art. To the left, it's art that's made to be pleasing and applied art to the right. And this is typically art that is just designed. The design on a water bottle, the design on your clothes, the design on your backpacks and Political art, um, if you would like to pause here, would be a great example would be Picasso's Guernica, the painting he made in response to the Nazis bombing the town Guernica. Social art, or for social awareness, <clears throat> um, the best example I would have is uh, the Guerrilla Girls. Now, these were an anonymous group of feminists, and they dedicated their lives fighting sexism and racism against minorities in the art world. And if you look at this, one of their photos in the in the middle here, they used to print designs and do performance arts. Um, they have a hypocrite definition. And it says, an art collector who buys white male art at benefits for liberal causes, but never buys art by women or artists of color. And um, these group of feminists, uh, this group was founded in the 80s, but they are still anonymous to this day. So that is um, a very, very, very big deal. And ceremonial art would be art that uh, people typically gather as a whole to, to celebrate. Um, so it's usually organized in a religious manner or, or a, a space for people to actually gather. Um, I, I would say that in ceremony, you could also have places like the Rothko Chapel um, in Houston and um, typically religious spaces. I want to show you this uh, photo. This is a, a very important photo. I think it's, I believe it's the most important photo in boxing history. These are Muhammad Ali's knuckles. And the reason why this is important is because if you're not familiar with the Nation of Islam, it's a group of black Muslims. And in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and on, uh, America was going through a lot of segregation and integration. And this photo was taken by a photographer. Now, the Nation of Islam would not allow white photographers to basically come to their establishments. So this photographer, a black male, Gordon Parks, took this photo of Muhammad Ali's knuckles. And the reason why I say that this photo is important is not because of just the picture itself, but basically because of the person who took it. The person who took it happened to be the most loving <laughs> photographer you may ever come across. Because in terms of racism, his whole idea was basically against the uh, affirmative action he received. Now, for example, yes, he was able to take this photo, but he disliked the idea that you could be racist even as a black person so much that he dedicated a lot of his life against racism in all forms. So he didn't care if it was racism against blacks or whites. Which is why I believe this is one of the greatest photos ever in, in boxing. Because you you have it taken 
by someone who was against why they were able to take it. Um, but, I mean, he understood what was going on. And I want to leave you with this quote from Martin Luther King. I'll, I'll actually play the audio here. Yeah, I think it, it's a great metaphor for um, how art applies to everything. Did you ever stop to think that you can't leave for your job in the morning? without being dependent on most of the world. You get up in the morning and go to the bathroom and reach over for a sponge, and that's handed to you by a Pacific Islander. You reach for a bar of soap, and that's given to you at the hands of a Frenchman. And then you go in the kitchen to drink your coffee for the morning. That's poured in your cup by a South American. Or maybe you want tea that's poured in your cup by Chinese. Or maybe you are desirous of having cocoa for breakfast, and that's poured in your cup by a West African. And then you reach over for your toast, and that's given to you at the hands of an English-speaking farmer, not to mention the baker. And before you finish eating breakfast in the morning, you're dependent on more than half of the world. This is the way our universe is structured.